Here you. Hello, Miriam. Hi, Henry. I see you. Hello. Hey. Good evening. Hello, Bob. Hello. How you doing, Henry? How you doing? I'll call Janice. She may not have remembered the meeting. I don't think we'll have a quorum without her. Mm -hmm. Karen, um, I saw her this afternoon, so she she said she would be here. Okay, well, try it. Do what we can. Beautiful weather, though. Henry, is your sound working? Who, who are you? Who are you talking to? Can't hear you. Can't hear me. I can hear you. Uh, can everybody else hear me? Uh, Mateo, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. So, Miriam. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Well, um, Bert can't make it. Yep. Well, I don't know. This uh, I, when I speak, say something. I, I tell me if I'm out of order to suggest this. But okay. I was going to suggest that some members of the committee could meet me at the town common at some point next week and look at that uh, object together. Uh, I think that'd be useful. For, you know, just to have an in-person meeting and with part of the committee. I think that having, uh, at least in the finance committee and the building committee, we could have site visits without having a quorum. Yeah, absolutely. So I would be willing and happy to meet 
with some yeah, members or all members of the committee next week. So if, and I think that'd be better than just, I mean, I'd be happy to talk to you tonight. That's why I'm here. But yeah. um, I think I'd be useful to look at the, the sign together. What yeah, that'd be great, Bob. And time for that. Yeah. I, let me try to coordinate it because my schedule, I'll have to look at my schedule. Um, yeah, that that'd be. I think that'd be great. We'll do that and um, see what 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 occurs. You know, um, but I think it would be useful to have a conversation right there. Um, I feel like there's something going on on the thirtieth. Are you available on the thirtieth, Bob? Let's see. Uh, yeah, Monday. it's thirtieth Monday. Is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm around. I'm not. Let me just check my calendar here. But I think I don't. Have to be anywhere on the thirtieth. No, blank. All right. Um, oh, oh, here comes somebody, Leslie. Yeah, that doesn't help us for quorum, though. Um, yeah, I could do. I could do like eleven o'clock. Okay. Well, does that work for others, or it works for me? Uh, what, what day and time was that again? Monday, Monday. eleven. Uh, once again. Monday at 11. 11. Sure, that works for me. Hello, Karen. Were you able to uh, log in? That time works for me as well. Great. Uh, well, that, that's from the website. That's from the town website. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Hi, Leslie. Hi. We don't have a quorum yet. Okay. What's happening Wednesday, Monday at 11? Uh, me at the town common. Look at the guide board. I was going to give an update on um, various things about it today, but um, unfortunately, we don't have a quorum. You don't think you're going to get one? Well, I don't know where Janice is, and Rob, uh, uh, Henry's trying to talk to... Karen, was Karen trying to join? Yeah, she's been trying to get on and apparently it's not working for her. Um, she's gonna what try are, one more time. Should we walk, try, oh, you can't talk to her at the same time because- No. <laughs> right. I'll give it a minute. It's always the same login number, isn't it? it yes. Is. So it shouldn't be that. I don't know. Is the do the meeting codes change? Well, I, I gave everything that's on. I give her everything that's on the website. The, you know the the the, the calendar. Meeting codes do change. Bob, I don't know if you've seen the proposals that we've gotten from other um, specialists who've done assessments. We we uh, we had a whole assessment done with a um, by a conservationist who did an analysis and um, came up with a, a treatment. Um, oh, okay. flip that to me before the meeting. That'd be wonderful. I'll have a look at it. I can tell yep. you my thoughts are about that too. Sure. It's so nice to see you, Bob. Nice to see you too. I don't, I don't. Since COVID started, you know, it just seems like life itself has changed. You know, it surely uh, has. Social dimensions of it have for sure. But uh, and this is part of what we do now: is meet on Zoom. <laughs> and there's some upsides to that. I mean, you know, just right up a couple of steps away from my coffee pot. You know, but uh, yeah, it's not the same. But uh, so we'll maybe meet in person on Monday if you can make it. Are you going to be working Monday? Uh, yeah, my office hours started at 11. I'm not sure what the, the meeting is about because I just got on after. I just, just, got on. just to go look at the guide board together with Bob. 
I don't think you could ask for a finer person to look at the guide board. That's all I have to say. And I think you know that from previous meetings. I also, while we're waiting though, I will say that, let's see, who was I? Oh, it was actually, I was doing some um, research in the town hall for Bob's new neighbor who bought Seven Baker Road. And I happened to be going through a, a photo album that we put together back in 1976. And it showed the um, the guide board with that peaked roof in a picture from 1976. We didn't we have a picture from the late 60s that had the peaked roof? Or That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I thought that you were thinking that the peaked roof came with the last renovation. No, no, I thought it had been around yeah. maybe yeah. 50, 50 or 60 years. Okay. Well, I don't think we're going to get a quorum. Look That's like bad. Doesn't look like well, sorry about that. And uh, I'll see you Monday, if not sooner. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks for coming, Bob. Okay. Good night, Good night folks. This is night. discouraging. All right. Oh, well, whoa, 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 whoa. Here, I think we've got a, we have a. Somebody's coming in. Oh, Karen's coming. Oh. Karen, finally. Is, hey, somebody want to get Bob back? Oh. Let me see if I can get Bob back. Uh, do you have his number? Yeah, I have his number. Okay. All right. Hi, Bob. It's Miriam. We have a quorum if you want to come back. Oh, Thanks. <laughs> okay. Hi, Karen. It's Miriam. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good. How's your hub? hubby? He's good. He's good. Good. All right. Well, um, Henry, you want to call a meeting to order? Yes. You know, I don't count as a quorum member. That's right. I know, but we got four now. Oh, so okay. I move to call this meeting to order but i don't see carol oh karen's He's there. here but not bob okay uh, i guess we're waiting for bob well we can we do the minutes sure any comments on the minutes this is for um the 30th august 30th. 3rd Very thorough minutes. Okay. Well, I'll move that we approve the minutes for August 30th. Second. So we'll go down the list then. Um, Ishan? Aye. Stravanka? Actually, yes. we got to stop. Was Karen at that meeting? She was, I believe. Okay, right. I thought she was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Am I right? Yes. I'm pretty sure she was there. Okay, good. Is that an aye then, Karen? Yes. Got it. Pangalo. Aye. Get it. Aye. And I'll do it. Okay. Uh, what's the next item here? Well, it's for me to give a guy the update on the guide board. Okay. Let me go ahead then. So um, there's a couple things I we need to discuss tonight about it. Um, the most important thing right off the bat is that um, after Sorry, trying to mute, um, after waiting for a while, I finally got feedback from Donna McNichol about the contract for um, Williamstown Art Conservation Center, and Donna had nixed. Um, a paragraph in their contract having to do with liability. And I went back to um, Williamstown and asked them if that was acceptable to them. And they said it wasn't, that was boilerplate. And I went back to Donna to see if Donna could recommend some like middle ground or some sort of modification or some alternative language. And I have not gotten anything from her at this point. 
and I'm feeling pretty stuck with this because yeah. I, yeah. Sorry. I, did, did Donna say why she objected to items five and seven? Yeah. Um, and let me pull up the email if I can. And, and, you know, it, 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 some of it just did not make, I guess my feeling was that it was kind of an absurd, um, interpretation, but again, I'm not an attorney. So, um, so what she said first was that it was the language about indemnification that was unacceptable. Why should we indemnify them when they're doing the work? If someone gets hurt or property is damaged when they're working on the guide board at their facility, why in the world would the town accept indemnifying them? The town is not present, has no control over the workers, workspace, et cetera. And um, so I said, you know, is there some way to have maybe a limited, I mean, a limited um, indemnification? I mean, I would think that they don't want to get sued by us. If I, I, I wasn't thinking of it as in terms of the risk of one of their workers getting hurt. I thought more likely if the guide board got damaged accidentally, um, not through any fault of theirs, that they might want to be protected from our going and seeking claims against them for that damage. Um, there is a clause in the language which excludes negligence or misconduct, but I could imagine that something could happen accidentally. You know, uh, a piece of equipment fails and it falls over or something and gets damaged or something. And that would be a concern for them about their legal exposure. I just feel kind of stuck with this. I mean, I feel like, you know, I don't know what else. Personally, I just don't know how we would ever get a contractor who would work with us. This just seems like boilerplate. Doesn't the uh, company have its own insurance for wor working at their place? Exactly. My yeah, there's insurance. If they do have insurance, it's insured. So, I mean, the, I mean, the owner, I'll read you, let me do, can I do screen share and I'll, I'll pull up sure. the passage. Sure. We can look at it. I think this is it. Well, okay. I'm, I'm wondering. Uh, uh, well, let's just wait, just let's look at this for a sec. Right. Um, so here's the passage that she was objecting to. It's number five. The owner agrees that neither the center nor Clark Art Center shall be liable or responsible for any losses, causes of action, suits, or of whatever nature, blah, 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 relating to or rising out of center's um, services, except for gross negligence. Um, the owner expressly releases discharges and agrees to indemnify or hold harmless for any losses, claims of whatever nature. So maybe it's that last, that second sentence. Because the first one is that we agree to not file a claim against them. The second one is that we're indemnifying and maybe it's the indemnification. You know, this paragraph here, if you can see it highlighted here. They might agree to that because, you know, they're not interested. I don't truly think that they're going to try and sue us for something that happens in their workshop. Hmm. I mean, I, I think that would be a stretch. I don't think they would have much of a claim, but I could understand their wanting to know that we're not going to hold them liable. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts, Mateo? Well, I mean, it, it's it's this is frustrating for a couple of reasons in that, you know, this seems like straightforward this is standard practice for conservation work. 
Um, you know, if the if the town has insurance on it as town owned property, and and the um, the center and the Clark Art Institute have their own insurance, I don't. I I I guess I just I don't understand what Donna's objections are to this. You know, as you I think quite rightly pointed out, it specifies except in the case of negligence, right? So if the if the concern is that something happens because somebody isn't doing their job right, that's that's covered in this. My concern is that we're we're not going to find another we're rep, not reputable professional conservator who meets the standards, um, you know, of the Secretary of Interior who's not going to require this. And so the, no, I find they all will. They yeah, all will. I find that frustrating and I guess I just don't I don't know um do we Oops, I'm sorry. I, I got rid of it. <laughs> I, I guess what I what I would like to know and this is just sort of a clarification for somebody, you know, I'm I'm new on on the commission but is the town council's role here um does she have veto authority over this or are we allowed to proceed is this advisory or is this required? Well, you know i think that because we're talking about a piece of property real property that the town owns you know um the we are limited um and i did push back and i said i don't honestly believe we're going to find any other company that is not going to have some similar kind of liability we had a similar issue come up with Donna, and I don't know if you remember this, Henry, when yep. we were hiring a consultant. You, you'll, you'll be, you might find this amusing, Mateo, but we hired a anthropologist to do some consulting when we were um, authoring that um, that document that we produced on indigenous ceremonial sites. Yeah. And um, Lise McLaughlin, and we went around and around and around around the consulting contract because Donna objected to a um, Donna wanted a paragraph added to the contract saying that any intellectual property that Lise relied upon in consulting with us would belong to the town. And Lise had authored some books and she was saying like, no way are my books belonging to the town. And of course I rely on them and my research and my data um, and my notes and archives are all mine. I'm not giving everything over to the town just because I have one consulting contract. And yeah. we just went, I mean, it was absurd. It was absurd. And in the end, because she was a consultant and we have a statutory um ability to hire consultants without any approval from the, the town council. We just went ahead and hired her. <laughs> and that was the end of it. And then we never, well, there was no, never. Well, no, no, uh, there was another detail there. Well, there I was. Went back and forth on this myself um, with, well, with Becky and, and uh, finally uh, Donna, uh, conceded that um, we do actually have that that license to hire a, a yeah. consultant without uh, right. approval. We did. It, we did have it. It was uh, because the state law says we can hire consultants. But but the issue around the intellectual property just was making. I mean, I just I was pulling my hair out because like there was just it was too absurd. You know, she was saying, you know, that, she, you know, she did presentations, she had PowerPoints, you know, she wasn't going to give all of that over and let the town take it over and then start using it. Um, it just wasn't reasonable um, when you're hiring a, a, someone with ex, an expert <laughs> to say you're going to own their intellectual property. Um, I, wonder, so I wonder if, if this, if the solution, I mean, if this is something that is relatively novel in terms of working with it you know for for the town and for for town council in terms of working with a, a, a historical conservationist um does does the center have their own attorney that donna can talk to somebody there who can explain to her that this is this is standard operating procedure in the industry and, and that we're not like inventing the wheel yeah i probably they do um because they, when I showed them, uh, when I sent them the edit that Donna had requested, which was X'd out this paragraph, um, you know, they talked to their attorney. 
Um, I, I'm wondering about going back to Donna and asking her if maybe the second sentence, if that was eliminated or modified in some way. I asked her, you know, what would be, you know, some language rather than just saying no, could she come up with some language that would possibly work? And there was another email exchange after that. I was saying, you know, could there be some sort of limited, limited release of claims or or something? And I um she what was the what was the last thing she said? I asked what I asked her was um if it was the indemnification that was the concern, could there be some sort of mutual indemnification? Um and she said she could offer language, but that would state that any cause of injury or damages related solely to the negligence by the town of Shutesbury, the town would indemnify up to the amount in the Tort Claims Act. She said, but what would be the situation where the town would be negligent while they're working on the post? It just makes no sense. Um But they're not they're not asking to be held harmless from negligence. They're saying except for gross negligence. So if it's negligence, they're not this language isn't trying to hold them harmless. It's only um, I would think an accident, you know, on something unintentional. And it seems to be strictly limited to the whatever value is assigned to this this artifact i don't i don't read anything here that says anything to do with uh, employees it, it, how, how do you make that that leap injury uh claim well let me go back to the i, I let me go back to the the paragraph hang on um so it says henry it's it ugh, what just happened to it why did it do that can you guys see it no uh, just, just click up one of the PDF. Just click one of hold the on. PDFs. Let me try it again. No, it 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 misbehaved on me. Let me. It's um. It's how do I get back out of? It's in create. I need to get out of that. Oh, crying out loud. All right, let's go back. All right, here we are, we're back. So what it says is any losses, claims, causes of action, suits, damages. So it could be anything, but you know, she's making the argument about an injury, a personal injury, as opposed to it, the property getting damaged. Because if the structure gets damaged, you're right. There's a, there's a limit to the value of the structure. You can't really, you know, um, sue for, for damages beyond the, what the value of it is. To, but if somebody got injured, the, you know, let's say somebody got lead poisoning from touching the paint, I don't know, led to something absurd like that. But I, I, I don't know. Well, I'll try and talk to her again about it um, and maybe suggest that she talk to their lawyer. Um, and I, I guess I would just hope that she would be willing to find a way forward to make this happen. Um, because I think it's sort of like, you know, the town has voted that they want this work to go forward it's an approved project so i kind of don't want to get hung up on this technicality if she can't propose something that allows us to do it i mean it's also, the town must, also a, a timely must, what it's also a question of timeliness right like we, we need to get this thing under undercover and taken care of before snow starts coming down right um, right i can't imagine that there aren't numerous situations where the town is dealing with contracts where there's some sort of you know liability indemnification clause i mean i it seems like that must be very typical with almost any contract 
Bob, you're on the finance committee. Do you know? You see contracts. I've been a contractor for a long time. And actually, I've done some work for the town uh, under various uh, arrangements, some of which were contracts, some of which were just informal agreements about what needed to be done and how I was going to proceed and what it would cost and so forth. But, uh, you know, this is a rather formal contract. It's, it's like you said, it's copper plate for all circumstances. One size fits all. Seems to me just from reading the little bit that I read on the screen here is that this is a, a conservation uh, outfit that does conservation and artwork. Uh, doesn't seem like really an architectural firm or an architectural uh, a preservation firm primarily. It just seems like this is the Clark Institute. It must be associated with the Clark Museum and it must have to do with uh, conservation of artwork uh, primarily. I, I'm just guessing uh, that, that that would be the case. But for me as a contractor, yeah, contractors, there's, there's clear precedent for who's responsible for what. If I take out a building permit, then I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a adopting the con the responsibility for all the uh, liability of the job, and the owner is not is indemnified. But if the owner takes it out, then the owner is responsible for their own property and what might happen. But again, in in my in my experience, most of the time I work with people that trust me and I trust them, and I'm not going to sue them, and they're not going to sue me, and they don't have to be. Uh, equipped to prepare myself for any kind of bad faith. Uh, don't expect it, don't usually encounter it. And this is a small job. This is an extremely small job. Someone takes the sign away and, and does some repairs and a maintenance to it, brings it back. It's not a valuable work of art. It's it's a artifact we love. It's nice, it's worth uh, fixing. Uh, to replace it would cost money anyway. So uh, let's do it, but it's not, I think, my my general impression of this is that that's kind of overkill. But anyway, that's just me. I think last time I did it, I think I charged them. I don't remember what I charged them. Not very much. And it was, I think it was satisfactory. Unfortunately, it was 12 years ago or something. So these things need to be done on a regular basis. Usually I figure paint jobs last about five to seven years. Uh, that means this was like five years late or something. So if it was just painted five years ago, it would have been, we'd be fine. You know, maybe a couple of minor repairs to the roof and the sign would be sitting there and it'd be fine. So uh, that's my take. That's, and I, I spent many, most of my career fixing up old places. I really love it. And I've learned a lot about uh, vernacular architecture around this area in the Connecticut Valley and New England. And uh, I spent a lot of time developing uh, skills and tooling to to be able to restore and repair old houses so um, and I think this is a wonderful little thing that you know the the most valuable asset <laughs> as architecturally is the old town hall that is a that's really a beautiful historic building this is a nice little object it sits on the common and it should be kept there I think and I'm glad you guys are taking it on and I think uh, I'd be happy to meet with you and then uh, we give you my take uh, on what the repairs should be. Uh, so, so Bob, if you've already signed up on Clark, Clark Institute, well then, you know, I did hear some rumors about the the numbers, and they kind of astonished me. But you know, um, that's your decision. You're the historical commission. I'm just, uh, um, and the finance committee has nothing to do with this. This has already been approved, as you said. So, uh, but again, I'd be happy to. You know, I've been really busy. That's. I'm sorry if I've been. Um, uh, you know, late and not responsive to this project, but I've just been busy with my own house, which is an old house too, built in 1978. And I've been getting it painted. So, but Monday, I'd be happy to meet you. So, uh, so just to give you a little background, Bob, um, we had a number of quotes from different people. I probably uh, talked to 15 different people. Oh. Um, and this was, and, and some, one of the firms that we had thought we were going to work with backed out because he felt it was uh, too damaged to be restored. Um, so, and, and some of the companies just gave us prices that were like astronomical. So that was, they were not even possible to be considered. So 
this was kind of the middle of the ground that's with a company that did have experience working with wooden structures. So even though they are an art conservation center, they do work on um, wood structures and, and wood objects. So they it seemed like they had the skill set um, and they came out and did an assessment and then developed a proposal for us. So we've kind of been moving along, I think, with the assumption that we were going to go with them. I, I had been interested in hearing if you had wanted to put in a bid for it, but you never did. So I think we moved along because we felt like we had to take some action. Um, if you think you still want to do that, um, you know, it's not too late, but we, we do need to figure things out. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just meet Monday and then we'll look at the thing. I haven't looked, I haven't looked closely at it for a while. I'd be, I'd like and, to. And so one of the questions I have for you um, is to get a sense of how heavy it is. It's not very heavy. I mean, I think if I recall correctly, uh, uh, two or three of us lifted it onto my pickup truck and just picked it up and put it on a pallet and then picked up the pallet um, yeah. the truck. And then I took the pallet off with a forklift at my shop, okay. put it in my barn and then yep. uh, it was safe. So my, as I was thinking, I, I figured it might be about 200 pounds. My husband thought it might be 400. So that's a big difference. You don't think it's 400? I don't think it's anything that can't be, we can't rally, you know, some strong people like Leslie and Becky to help us put it on a truck, you know, so. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Um, so I did get some guidance from consult. I talked with Christine Puza about what her recommendations would be for how to move it and what it would need to protect it um, for transporting it to them. So it needs to be put on a, a pallet. She's recommending that we get some, they're not very expensive. Um, it's a uh, vibration isolating rubber pads um, so that it's uh, not getting rattled um, during the travel. Um, and then, they would like it once it's in the truck to have it wrapped up in um, polyethylene sheeting and, and duct tape. Um, I talked with my husband and he has a pretty good idea of how you could block it and brace it in a pickup truck so that once you got a pallet in and you had a pallet, you might have to cut a pallet down to fit onto the truck. The bigger challenge is how to get it lifted up onto the pickup truck. And you're saying, Bob, that you didn't find that to be a problem. No, we just lifted it. I don't it, know. Yeah, it was, it was just lifted it up, you know, four people or something, picked it up, put it on okay. the tailgate, slid it in, uh, lashed a rope around the top of it from both sides and put it, you know, tied it to the truck so it wouldn't tip over. Um, and, you know, it's, it was yep. fine. It was no, no damage was done to it in transport and, of course, when we went to my house, which is two and a half miles away, if it was going yeah, to yeah, this is a little different. Going to Williamstown, uh, you probably want to be take more care with putting a moving blanket around it before you tied it tied it down or something, so that there would be no abrasions from rope on the corners or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Right, and and plastic sheeting. Um, plastic, yeah, you know, plastic sheeting if it's bad weather but uh you know they actually want it plastic sheeting uh i think they actually want the plastic sheeting around the whole thing because um to make sure it doesn't bring any insects into their lab i don't know um that's like Christo. plastic sheeting around the uh, signboard yeah um so um you know we could try to you know I think this is doable in terms of the moving. I think we can, uh, if we can, uh, we can either find someone to volunteer who has an open bed pickup truck who's willing to do it, or we could potentially rent a U-Haul pickup truck, uh, which is not too expensive. Um, I imagine the town will have all sorts of paperwork about liability and waivers that will everybody involved will have to sign because they don't want anybody getting a back injury from this thing oh <laughs> <laughs> i could just well, i could just I, I, that's a litigious, a litigious world we live in eh? i know i know um but i think becky has some paperwork that she uses for things like that that we would get 
Um, so, you know, we had the, so it seems like the big stumbling block is the contract and then we could potentially move forward. Oh, I also just for grins and giggles, I could, did contact a moving company that moves pianos just to see what that would look like. And that would be ridiculously expensive. I mean, yes, they could move it, but yeah. it would cost us $1,500 each way. Yeah. That, that's just not, that's prohibitive, I think. Well, yeah, it is. So anyway, uh, I guess I'll, I'll look forward to seeing all everybody on Monday at those who can make it and I'll. Okay. I'll just, unless you have some other questions for me, I'll just retire. Um, no, I think, I think, you know, we'll see you. That'd be great. Okay, great. Thanks. Goodbye again. Thanks. Uh, Bob, Bob, Bob. Yeah, Henry. Before, before you go, uh, I was just wondering if you had ever dealt with the schoolhouse, the, uh, the schoolhouse uh, on West Pelham. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I was on the building committee when that job was uh, being uh, considered by the committee. Yeah. And I wanted to do the job. And uh, there was some question uh, about, you know, conflict of interest being on the committee and being a, a oh. bidder. So I uh, recused myself from consideration or discussion of this project. And then I bid on the project and I was underbid by a couple hundred dollars by some guy from uh, Eastern part of the state who claimed to be an expert at historic renovation and restoration. And he was a complete hack, complete monstrous hack with a crew of dummies and uh, they were destroying the, the the foundation of the sills and we, we i got involved and we managed to steer it in a decent a decent direction but contracting is difficult especially on these uh, public it's always better to public kind of servers or ser things that where people just fling, fling prices at the wall and mm -hmm. they come up to shootsbury from swampscott wherever it was and that, and just with a crew of uh, not people that were not competent to do any of the work. And we've had some other experiences on the building committee with getting, garnering uh, bids. And some people just throw these incredibly high bids at things without even looking at the work. And uh, I think personally, I think that you go to, you try to work with people that you have good recommendations or you know. And we always try in the building committee to hire local talent because number one, uh, they're local. Number two, they're not going. In, they're around. So if things don't work out, uh, you know, it's it it's a it's a it's a spur for them to do a decent job, you know, because they have reputation to protect in the communities. Well, that's precisely what we're we're looking at. There's some damage to the building right now. Really, uh, what's what's going on with it? I mean, we looked uh, at it at the building committee when we were there. We did a we did an appraisal that there's some drip. There's some problems with the lack of a gutter there, and there's some drip mm -hmm. problems from the roof that up into yeah. the bottom of the building and we, we recommended that we put wood gutters on it uh, okay. and take the water away from that and, and and also it's particularly around the door where there's a stone that the water splashes on and um, you know that could that's classic that causes a rut in the sill under the door sill you know so yeah that's definitely something that's going to be done um, you know yeah, that's an easy fix the gutters you know yeah yeah there's uh, on the uh... I guess it would be the north northwest corner of the building. The uh, uh, it's around that uh, the, the, you know there's a beam that runs up and down there, surrounded by some boards. It's rotted through. You can put a put a screwdriver through it, oh. and we don't know how far it goes in, but it, it seems to. Uh, it seems like the beam may be uh, salvageable, uh, and uh, I guess I guess Bert Fernandez didn't get in touch with you about uh, about this. Well, we should he should do that, and uh, you know I'm I'm getting a lot of experience these days with a system called the West system of epoxy. Yep. it's uh, it's 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 a pretty interesting material mm -hmm. to work with for re for restoration of because uh, it has structural. And they build sailboats with it. You know, it's it's very strong. It's very uh, useful when you for something like that. You can inject it into a post, right. and uh, you know, re you know, resurrect it without tearing the building down. You know, so yeah. often I'd have to look at that. 
could could yeah when would you have a moment to look at it uh sometime next week i mean right now i'm doing i'm restoring my west my wooden gutters with the west system right now that's what i'm doing my painter's I mean, coming back to paint them after i get it done it shouldn't take but a few minutes to look at this I yeah mean, well give me a call henry and i'll and i'll, I'll meet you down there you know sometime yeah. what about back to back on monday uh um, no. okay let's do that yeah okay yeah great Okay. All right. All right. So see you Monday, if not sooner. All righty. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I'm sending Donna another email, um, seeing whether I get something, some suggestions from her. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I, just xing it out without giving us some alternative language isn't so helpful. So, um, because I think they might be willing to compromise on something, but I think just saying no, no, no language whatsoever is probably gonna not fly with them. So, um, I think Mattel's advice that, that we we have her contact their lawyer. Right? Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. And maybe we should let them know in advance that that she will be <laughs> contacting them just so they're prepared. Would, yeah, I would I would reach out to them. Yeah. We put that one to rest then for the evening. Well, um, you know, if this if I'm hitting up against a wall, you know, we may be in this this could fall apart. <laughs> so I am a little concerned um about what what uh what our options are gonna be. So I'm trying to see the um so it sounds like from what Bob is saying, you know, it's not as heavy as I feared. Um, and so perhaps getting it um, moved down to the truck won't be as difficult. I also thought about reaching out to Steve Sullivan from the highway department and seeing if, um, you know, they had any dollies that might be helpful. Or they might, might have a, they may actually have a pallet jack or something. Anything else the commission could do to, um, I guess not. Well, I think, you know, if we're running up against a wall, then I think we probably have to go back to the select board. Because mm -hmm. I thought we kind of had a, a tentative um, agreement on, on an approach and, you know, that we all sort of agreed that it needed to move before winter. And, you know, it's just this piece of it. And um, I don't know, you know, sometimes, I, you know, my Donna goes to know very quickly and, you know, it takes a little effort to get her to kind of see the gray area. We kind of had the same thing happen with the, um, the conservation restriction and the, the uh, contracting for the, uh, conservation area that we purchased last year it was um it was looking for a minute there like maybe the whole thing was going to fall through all you know two hundred seventy five thousand dollars worth of it but it 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 came through we worked it out well there's hope moving right along then uh what is next on our agenda I don't think we had anything else. Well, let me just update you. I I, I visited the uh, schoolhouse today and uh, had a couple of uh, experienced, you know, builder types, local, uh, Russ Wilson. And the other fellow's name is Stephen. He's on the buildings committee. I, I can't remember his last name. Stephen Dalmas. Dalmas. Yeah. In fact, he was a guest. I think he's actually an architect. Yeah. So, so uh, 
they estimated the total cost of fixing that to be in the vicinity of two thousand two hundred dollars. Is that materials and labor? Is that or that just with donated labor and just the materials? No, uh, uh, that would be the cost of doing this kind of work. It's it, it's not as as Bob Groves was saying. Um, if the main beam is is still intact, it can be um, salvaged using epoxy materials uh and this is what um what would keep the cost down you wouldn't have to replace the main beam or anything just you know pull out the rot fix the beam and and put it back um the reason it rotted out is that it had a um, lightning uh a, a ground that, that ran from the roof yeah. down the side yeah. of the building and yeah. the water came down that with that. Yeah, that's what we Stephen Dalmas explained that last time. Good. Anyway, just thought I'd let you know. So I what I'm just trying to understand is the two thousand is that just for materials or are we talking about hiring a contractor? I believe that's the cost it would take um with you know labor and materials, uh with somebody local, let's say, because again we, we went over prices apparently have gone through the roof. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, any you contract anybody around, you know, it, it's going to be expensive. So that I'm still confused. So not volunteer labor. It was unclear to me, but uh, I, I was under the impression that that's what it would cost if you had local people doing it. Okay, I I think it'd be good to get a more fleshed out because it sounds. If you're hiring a carpenter to do it, that sounds really low. You can't get carpenters to do a sneeze without it costing five thousand dollars these days. And you know that might be it might be a couple of days of work just for the labor. I'm guessing, not mentioning the the materials. So no, no, they, they wouldn't just uh, quote the, the cost of the the materials. I mean, no, we're talking about doing the job. Um, so was it were they was russ wilson interested in doing the work or it was he no was russ is not particularly interested he's retired and he's and, and you know i mean there is a conflict of again you know you know his sister is becky becky torres becky wilson anyway he, we okay went over well, um, so I guess we'll need to get quotes. Yeah, his son might 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 work. He recommended his son actually. Okay. To do that job, but we could put out again bids. Finally, I just want to point out that neither of these fellows thought it, it was an urgent job. In other words the source of the damage has been resolved it's not going to go anywhere if we leave it for a time okay so there's time to do it so was bert going to like write up a uh like a scope and then try to get some some different quotes uh, that that was the idea essentially i mean after this visit uh with them we have an idea, we have a sense of how much it might cost using you know favorable <laughs> labor prices um and, and, and yeah what is the name of the company that did the restoration work for the old hearse house in new salem do you know leslie Oh, you're muted. Can't hear you. <laughs> Hello, Leslie. Do you know, Mateo, maybe you, would you be able to figure it? 
Um, I would have to dig around to try to find it. I don't know if I have that off the top of my head. There was head. somebody. Hey, I'm here. Yeah, it's, hi. It's the brother of the gentleman who lives. Um, I can come up with this name from the records in the closet. His brother <laughs> lives right here in town. What I'd been told, because I was wondering about him for the guide board, was that she really didn't want to take on another town project, but that's all he was. <laughs> oh, yeah. He would or could. He was excellent. He did a beautiful job. He was very communicative. He showed us things along the way that he found, the old things he found. He was he was wonderful. And I will come up with his name and get it to you. I just have to go to the closet to look it up or give my brain until it wakes up in the morning. Okay. Yeah, just send it to me. That'd be great. But maybe that'd be worth getting, you know. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he would take it. If he would, you can't go wrong. Sorry, I don't have it in the, in the word. Oak. Sorry. Let's see, something oak, white oak. His company was called White Oak something, but um, Malcolm Brown is the couple that lives closer to the center of town. And was, was it, was it, were they in him and was he in New Salem? Is that White Oak Timber? Yeah. Frame? Yes, that's the one. Jamie, if Jamie lives in town, then it's, it was a family of boys all named, started with J names or something like that. <laughs> My memory's not good. But you're yes. closing in on any of us could Google right now White Oak. I found, yeah, I found White Oak timber frame. That's it. Okay. Well, they might. That might be an option. They do restoration and preservation work. And he huh? was good. That hmm. building is just solid, true, straight. Oh. I could ask him about the guide board. You don't think <laughs> they don't think they want to have anything to do. I with... don't want to. I don't want to say that because if you could get him, it would be great. And uh -huh. it wasn't through him that I heard that he maybe didn't want to take on another town project. Okay. All right. Looks like he does mostly barn and homes, but um, yeah. All right. I mean, you know, we can only do so much. I, I guess I felt like I, I had kind of gone through so many different potential leads for the guide board. And so getting somebody who was willing to do it and had the right skill set seemed like a big win. Mm -hmm. yeah, you Maybe. did work really hard, Miriam. Thanks. All right. Um, but they might be worth Henry uh, reaching out to about the schoolhouse. Uh, reaching out, yeah, I think uh, what I'll, I will tell Bert then to actually take some bids. We have an idea of what's going to cost. Well, gonna I cost. think you know the way you need to do it. I mean, this is how I've approached it. I mean, I suppose maybe there are other ways. Is usually writing up a scope of what we're looking for, and then you know in writing, and then you need to get three bids. I mean, I think they ideally should be written bids. Isn't that usually, I mean, I know that this is under the, it isn't a competitive bid, but I think that process of having a scope, that's how, what we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, unless there there is uh, volunteer labor, and that, that's another possibility that, uh, mm -hmm. in which case we'd have to cough up money for the, the materials only. Mm -hmm. And we've got that $1,500 from the friends. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would say get it, it should get written up as a quote, as a bit, as a scope, and then um, and then get quotes based on that. So they're all kind of, you know, we're not looking at apples to oranges. We're all kind of looking at proposals based on the same set of facts. Okay. Well, um, should we try to meet in November? Yeah. 
touch base in any case. Um, see if there's are there any updates. Well, I'd like to kind of hopefully we should we're going to have to make board. some decisions on this, right? <laughs> um, if there's movement, and I can come to terms uh, agreeable terms with Donna, do I have your permission to move forward with getting the asking the select board to execute the contract? I'm not even sure if they have executed or they can authorize us to execute it, but I just want to make sure I have your permission to move forward. Um, if um, you know some things have to get signed, is that a, a motion? Well, I'm not making the motion. I'm asking um, first <laughs> for a discussion about that, and if somebody else can make a motion, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, I think I think that if there if there is a an agreement from the attorneys on both sides, then we want to proceed with it. So why don't give me author make a motion that gives me authorization to move forward with executing the contract or any other action thereof. Um, so that covers that. And um, because I don't know what'll what I might need to do. Sell my firstborn or something. <laughs> So I'll, yeah, I'll make, I'll make a motion to authorize Miriam to proceed with executing the agreement um, pending the discussion <laughs> and agreement between the attorneys. Whatever. <laughs> Is there a second? Henry, you yeah, got a call. I second. I, I second. Um, I, I... We we did we did mention Bob, to Bob that there was still time to bid on it. However, he has not bid yet, and we've sort of moved on. Yeah, I, I suppose that's the rationale here. Even though we've I guess I feel it. I feel like I I've done a lot of reaching out to him. I mean, I yeah. I called and I was you know um, trying to get him to do a bid back in December and followed up a few times with him. So, um, you know, I appreciate his expertise um, and his perspective and experience It's helpful, but I, I just don't know if we can hold out. I just, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. What about our meeting with him on Monday? Is that? I don't think Miriam's thinking of executing a contract before Monday, are you, Miriam? I think you're just asking. No, but but I, you know, I, you know, if he does want to give a bid, then we would have to have a meeting to review that. So, mm -hmm. and, oh. and we have to make some decisions. So, um, I mean, we could just, you know, tell him that we've decided we're going to try and move forward with. But you know, it could all fall through. I mean, the whole thing with Williamstown could fall through if we can't come to an agreement on terms, in which case we might be back to the drawing board and um, be begging anybody to do it. Has the price been okayed? Uh, sorry, say again? Has the price been okayed? Um, we reviewed the um, quote last, you know, a couple meetings back. I think it was approved. It was approved, essentially. It seems like just adding in to wait at least until after you've spoken with Bob on Monday before moving ahead with executing the contract, even if you. We're yeah. lucky enough to get the two attorneys to speak together by then. Right. I will say, and I I don't know, you know, what the select board will say about this. Um, you know, and their thinking may have evolved, but when we were first developing this project, um, you know, I think there was a desire to make sure that we really hired um a professional, pre you know. Mm -hmm conservation firm um rather than uh, and i'm not i'm not disparaging it, bob's credentials i know he's a professional and he really knows how to do restoration where i, I do understand that i wasn't speaking about him per, 
particularly, but so it seemed like there was some interest in this particular firm and what they were proposing. So I, I would hate to get into a place where the select board wants to go back and renegotiate like who we're going to use and like yep. yeah, yeah. big long debate about it. Yeah, it's, it's about timing here. It's okay, well, we can hold off and see what Bob has to say on Monday, but um, I, I think it's fine if you want to authorize me, have the vote with the understanding that I'm not going to take any action before Monday. Okay. Shall we go around the room? Motions on the table. Um, Zivanka. Is, is, has the price been approved? Has the price uh, been approved? We we there was a quote from this uh, preservation company that we, I I I think we did approve it. I don't know if we took an actual vote. We presented it to the select board, right? And it was the select board that that took action on it. Mm -hmm. So I think we were recommending it. And all the funding sources are in place. Maybe that's what Karen's question is. Um, no, I'm so sorry. I mean, I can go back and pull up the numbers. Um, let me see if I can find what how, what the breakdown was for numbers. Hang on one sec. So I think I had it in a spreadsheet. Give me one sec. I'm sorry, I don't have it up. So uh, maybe I didn't put in a spreadsheet. Let's see a spreadsheet in here. So the proposal, here we go. I do have a spreadsheet. Um, give me one sec. My computer's slow. All right. So let me do a screen share, if you don't mind. And I will pull up the guide board. And I did share all this with the select board when we met. This was in what we sent to the select board. So the initial assessment we've already paid for, which was a $759 assessment from Williamstown Art Conservation Center. Can you guys see this? Yep. And then the phase one restoration quote was $17,000. Um, and then um, I think that this is wrong, phase two, thank you. Um, estimating maybe about 5,000 details to be determined. So um, what that came out to was 23,000. We've got the grant for 10,000 from CPA, donation from friends, um, proposing um, using funds from our donation account and then uh, fundraising 2000, hopefully getting donations from the community. And if we don't get donations from the community, then we would need to take more out of the uh, historical commission fund. Currently we have about 18,000 in that fund. So yeah, it's a big expensive project. But at least you've you've figured out how it's going to be funded. That's I think maybe what Karen was asking. And I think yeah. that was helpful presentation. Yeah. Is that answer your question, Karen? I, I guess if there's money just and she's going to go okay it. Yeah, uh, yes, I guess so. I vote for it. Okay. Does that include the uh, transportation costs? We haven't uh, nailed no. them yet. No, it doesn't. But there is extra in the fund that you could spend. Yes. I mean, there would be some materials that we'd have to purchase for the um, transportation costs. And I guess um, what we should probably do 
is if I need to make arrangements for transportation and I need to make some per, some uh, expenditures um, to get authorization tonight so that, that I can go ahead and um, purchase those things and get reimbursed later. I mean, I'll go ahead and, and pay for them myself. Um, and then, you know, if it, re, you know, review the receipts later, but just get approval from the commission to do that. So Henry, we're still on the roll call. Yep. Um, defunct. Aye. That is aye. Angalo. Aye. Okay. And um, do I, I don't know that I need a motion, but just do I have the commission's permission if I need to buy some materials for, um, I don't think the materials are going to cost more than two or $300, I can't imagine. Sounds good to me. Um, but um, the question will be whether we can get someone with a truck who would be willing to do the transportation. So I would say, if you know anybody with a truck who would like to help, <laughs> Also, if you know anybody who's, um, you know, able to participate in lifting and moving this thing onto the truck and helping on that front um, without, uh, you know, fear of major orthopedic injuries, we need, we, I mean, I don't know, I, I'm, most of my friends are, have old, are old like me, <laughs> orthopedic injuries, so I'm not a good person for this. Um, do you guys have recommendations for finding people? I mean, I can ask around. I could put out a blast on next door Shootsbury, seeing if there might be what some people interested. What about getting there and then have the unloaded? That isn't going to be hard because they have a loading dock and you can move right. You can back right up to the loading dock and it's an adjustable loading dock so they can, they can offload it. I didn't know. Yeah. Um, I can also, um, there's a pretty active Facebook group for Shootsbury parents, and there are a lot of young folks on that. So I can also push it out to them and That's see if they How about if I, do you want me to put a uh, a blast on next door asking? Sometimes you can get volunteers coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I think it's I think it's worth doing. And then I can just copy that uh, language yeah. and drop it into the Facebook yeah. group. Yeah, I don't know how to frame it. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to discriminate against um, disabled people like myself. <laughs> but well, I think describe what the, <laughs> describe what the labor is, and then people will self-select about what they're people not. Can, yeah. Do it, and I think we should have them definitely, <laughs> you know, contact because we don't want like thirty people showing up with. Uh, no, you know, no, no, no. They would have to they have to contact me, and we'll we'll, we'll figure it out. You yeah. know, if we have in the, more than enough people, then. Um, that would be, we're not, we won't ask for more, but, you know, uh, there, there might be somebody who, you know, has some, some moving skills or, you know, might have some interest in this. So it's, it's a fun project. So. I'll, I'll ask around. So, um, the other, the other things I should just tell you, um, from talking to Christine Puza is that there's two things. One is that since they gave us the quote, they've gotten really backlogged and she just wanted us to be aware of that. And then the other piece she said is that, um, so you understand what the process is. I, She's going to, they're going to put this structure into a climate controlled um, environment. I, it may actually be like an airtight um, uh chamber of some sort and the idea is for it to dry out and for anything that's living in it to die that is the goal so any bugs that are in it any mold like they need to kind of let it all kind of um die out if you will before they start doing the restoration work and without um having it in her lab she can't tell how much moisture 
is in the wood. If the wood has a very high moisture content, I'm sure after the summer it does, it's gonna take longer and there's no way to predict how long that's going to take. And it could be weeks, it could be months. And so she said that between their backlog and then that factor, she said it's gonna be a very lengthy process to get it back. And so I just, you know, it'll be in process, but I don't think we should be, uh, it's realistic to think that it's gonna be back on Pound Common next summer. I don't think that's realistic. Things go. Okay. All right. So, um, are we good with this? Is there anything more? Uh, I, I, my observation is that whoever is a driver in this case has to be somebody, has to be chosen. Uh, you know, somebody we know, and well, somebody who's has experience, <laughs> or at least is, is re reliable in some way or other. Um, well, I yeah, I will see if anybody comes forward, and you yeah. know, um, if not, then we could uh, we could rent a U-Haul, and uh, it could be commissioners. You know, could could be involved. Could be, could be. Any of you want to be driving a truck? Mm -hmm. to work what? Mm -hmm. won't, be a, won't, won't be a big truck. Will it? it won't be a come on. pickup truck. Yeah. I, I, I was a Teamster at one time. Huh? You were? I was in the Teamster Union. Okay, so this is going to be your thing. You're going to do this. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> to drive through. <laughs> you must have. <laughs> Okay. Well, not you, somebody. Okay. No, I'm I'm thinking, you know, my neighbor has he's a landscaper. He's hauling equipment all the time. So he knows what he's got in the back of the pickup and he has to take it places. Something along those lines. Who's your late neighbor? Uh Josh Pycroft. Oh. I'll, I'll mention it to him and see what he Okay. You have his pickup truck. Yep. That sounds that's that's the first qualification. And he's probably a very decent driver. Good. All right. Um, so do we want to pick a date for just a check-in in November? So a week. So a month from now, he puts us right um, in Thanksgiving. Yeah. And uh the Concom has a meeting that I have to be out on the 15th on a Wednesday, so I can't do that night. Also depends what's scheduled, doesn't it? To... It does. Yep. Let's see. Yeah, Wednesdays are busy days. The thirteenth looks open. Don't see anything on the thirteenth. Okay. It's, it's a Wednesday. Okay. How's that sound? What day is that? December thirteenth. Yep. Uh, November. November. November thirteenth. Oh no no sorry I'm my mistake. On Monday. My mistake. I'm looking at December. <laughs> no. Uh, there's a yeah the fifteenth is the date in November but that it's there's a board of health meeting at seven, conservation commission at six. That won't do. What about Monday, thirteenth? What about Monday the thirteenth, Henry? Monday the thirteenth is open. I'm free. Okay. Um. Could we do it maybe, at like six thirty? Um, yeah, I'm teaching until six forty-five. So let's do seven then. Yes. Seven. Does that work for you, uh, 
in the tail? Yep. That's a little tight. <laughs> Your class is over at 645? Yeah, I'm teaching via Zoom, so. Oh, okay. All right, so yeah. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> you're, you're All right, I'm going to... I'm going to go and put post this before they take away our Zoom rights. Okay. <laughs> because it's the early bird that gets the Zoom slot. As uh, we know, sometimes it's a little tough. Okay. So we're talking about November the 13th of November. I'll put the West Schoolhouse approve minutes for uh, 1020. What is today? 25? Guys, October. Okay. Did we have a meeting earlier in October? Is this our second October meeting? Did we meet on the 20th, the 4th? Had to cross it off. We did. We did actually. Okay, well, I've got to do you the minutes for those two. All right, I'm behind on minutes, but I'm busy. Okay. Right. So we call it, call it Nathan. Move to adjourn. I move to adjourn. I second it. All right. So going around, Servanka. Yeah. Hi. Defunct. Hi. Gaddis. Hi. Angalo. Hi. Thanks all for well, coming. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you next Bye. time. Good night. Bye. Have a good night. Night. Keep well. Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ciao. <laughs>